Okay, it's one o'clock. And one thing we like to do is start start on time, right? So we'll get started. Um, first of all, thank you everyone for tuning in live for the, this crochet along. I've never done a crochet along before. I have done a live feed, but never simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So bear with me if my eyes aren't pointed in the right direction. Actually, a lot of the time it might be down because we're gonna be crocheting. <laughs> So if you haven't already and you prefer following along on a piece of paper, I put the blossom scrunchie pattern in a download in the comments of the Facebook post or it's also on the YouTube uh, post for when I originally posted this tutorial. So if you want to download that, it's there now. Also, if you want to download the Blossom Scrunchie pattern, I put it in the comments as the first comment on the YouTube feed. So if you wanna hop over to the YouTube feed and look at the comments, there is a link where you can click on the link and print it out so you could follow along afterwards. So today, this is what we're gonna be making. I'm actually wearing mine right now. This one has no pom-pom in it, but for the um, crochet along, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crochet onto the pom-pom hair tie so that um, once I get this up on my website as a kit, if you wanted to buy the pom-pom hair tie to crochet onto and make it yourself, then you can, and then at least the instructions will be on the live feed. So once again, thank you everyone for uh, jumping onto the um, live stream and we will get started. So first of all, if you don't have one already, you need your G hook. It's the crochet hook. And this is like a six to 4.25 millimeter crochet hook, okay? And you will also need, I'm going to use the exact same yarn that I did in the tutorial, which is the Nako Fiore, this is bamboo, cotton, and linen blend. Now you could use any sock weight yarn, like which is about a three weight yarn, or if you have like a four weight yarn, like a worsted weight acrylic, that works too, and then you don't have to double this. It's just that your leaves will be bigger and then you wouldn't you wouldn't use 45 stitches all the way around. You'd probably just use 30 or as many that would fit onto a hair tie, okay? So the next, um, if you're following along on the printout, you need your hook, your yarn, and then you could use this. Uh, hey, Rosa, how are you? Rosa used to crochet for me. Thank you for tuning in today. So as I mentioned, um, this is the standard hair tie. It is the same size as a regular hair tie. And if you were to measure this hair tie, it's about two and a half, seven, two and a half inches across. So it's just a standard hair tie. So if you want to crochet onto a regular hair tie today, you absolutely can. It's the same measurements, okay? So, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna crochet onto the pom-pom hair tie. Um, any questions so far? I'll take that as a yes. So, okay. And Facebook people following on, on Facebook, as I mentioned before we got started, my husband, who is a teacher, decided to teach a class like right now. <laughs> So we're sharing bandwidth on my Facebooks, uh, like he's on Teams and I'm on Facebook. So for whatever reason, if it if it uh, starts interrupting, then just let me know because then I need to change my bandwidth over to my my uh, my turbo stick. OK, so now the first couple things that I have to do with um, the hair tie when we're starting the hair tie is um, there's a couple special stitches, but I'll go through those as I go through, as, as I, when I get to them. But the first thing what, that we need to do is we're going to slip knot, okay? Now to slip knot, um, I'll put it in the, this post later on, like here, but all the stitches I use in this video are stitches that I've already posted on instructions on my YouTube site. So the first one would be how to hold your yarn and how to hold your hook. 
and um, your hook and your yarn. And then the other one is how to single crochet, double crochet and treble crochet and how to slip stitch is on the other video as well. So you will be able to do all of these if you don't know how to crochet at all. But if you do know how to crochet, heck, let's get going already. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see here. Okay, so we're gonna slip knot first together. <laughs> And then we're gonna put our slip knot onto the hook and give it a nice tighten up. I wore a plain top today, just so if you're looking to see, once I get better technology, I hope to be able to shoot like close up and do the narration at the same time. But right now I still only have my phone and a computer. So bear with me. Okay, now if you've bought this kit, like if you end up buying this kit with the pom-pom on it, there's a bit of a join right here. And we're gonna cover that on when we crochet first, okay? So if you're crocheting onto a regular hair tie, you don't need to have to, to worry about the join. They glue, like there's a join here, but it really doesn't matter, it's easy to cover. But this one, you're gonna wanna consciously cover it. So move the pom-pom away from the joint and, may, and join your slip stitch to the right, which will be your left if you're viewing right now, of the joint. I'm gonna do that right now. So the way you will join the yarn to the to the hair tie is you you put the slip stitch the the loop on. Bear with me, and then you put your crochet hook underneath, hook it, and then you're going to pull and make a single crochet into to to join it. Let me start again. This is like way smoother in the tutorial, but this is probably the most cumbersome part of crocheting onto a hair tie and it's the pom-pom that makes it kind of wonky, but you'll go under and then you'll single crochet to join your yarn to the hair tie. Do you see that? We've single crocheted onto it. And now it's a piece of cake because we're just gonna continue single crocheting 45 times around the hair tie. So let's keep going. So this is the join. We're not we're not we're not going to count that as one. We're going to count the next one as one single crochet. So to single crochet, you put your hook down at the bottom, yarn over, catch it, and bring it to the top, and then single crochet. That's one. And then do it again. Two. And then we're going to keep going. three. Some of you, like Rosa, you probably are just whipping through this because I know how fast you crochet. Four, five, but I'm going to assume that some of the people on our live feed right now may not know how to crochet. Six, so we're going to just keep going until we get to 45. Now, if you want to see that join again, then be sure to hop on to the tutorial online. But in case you have any questions, I did want to do this as a live crochet along, because if you have any questions about the pattern or crocheting or anything like that, then this is our opportunity to for you to just drop that question right now onto the chat. Now it's interesting when it, when you guys crochet, do you guys listen to music? I know I do. And a lot of the time I'll listen to like an entire musical and sing along, of course. <laughs> so I'm crocheting along. Let me know if you guys are, are following along and how it's going. <clears throat> now I'm going to switch to my ergonomic handle because I just, I don't want my hand to start cramping. So I'm just, it's the same size hook that I have on my ergonomic handle. 
Rosa says that um, I'm older now, so I'm slower, but your instructions are clear. Oh my gosh, Rosa, even if you're slower, I'm sure you're much faster than I am. <laughs> Let me just check some of the comments here. Make sure everyone's following along well. Excellent. Great. Now, as I was talking, I am lost track of how many stitches. So I'm a big fan of making sure that you count your stitches at the end. And we are looking to have made 45 of these stitches around. So I'm gonna count. And for people who I've crocheted with in person or done a class with, we always look for the little V in the stitch as counting as one. If you're wondering where that is, it's here, right here. And I'll put that right in the camera. A V is, looks like that, okay? So I'm gonna count our stitches. One, two, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 35. So I just need 10 more. How are you guys doing? Are you, you're at 45 already? Awesome. Then wait for me. 36, 37, 38. 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, 112, So like I mentioned in the tutorial, once you get near the end, it gets a bit tight. You gotta just make sure that you don't snag your other bits. When you get near the end, it's also an easy, you can start crocheting this last piece underneath the other stitches. So then you have less to weave in later on, if you can manage to do that. And also if you're crocheting with the pom-pom, you now want to move the pom-pom to as close as possible to where you did the starting joint so that you can hide the joint afterwards. And you could hide kind of like the where the pom-pom joins as well. So I'm just gonna do two more stitches. One, two, and there we go. We'll weave this in later on, okay? How are we guys, how are we doing? Now we are at the point where there's a teeny bit of a gap from where we started with our very first stitch, which was right here. And for Facebook people, it's here. And now what we're gonna do is join with a slip stitch into the top stitch. So we're gonna go into the top stitch and join. Pull yarn over, pull through, and we slip stitch. Okay. Now we'll chain one. And we're going to create our first leaf. Now the first leaf, and this is a special stitch, or all the leaves, the special stitch is, and if you follow along here, it's, we're going to, after the chain one, do two half double crochets, two double crochets, one treble crochet, two double crochets, two half double crochets, and one slip stitch all in the same stitch. So it will form like a leaf um, shape and then the slip stitch will kind of like snug it all together. Okay, so that's what, how the design works. 
So we're going to, and I'll, I'll do it. We're going to, the first one is two half double crochets. So it's a yarn over, insert hook into the same stitch, pull a yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops. Oops, one thing first. In when if you're doing the if you want, you could cut one strand to make the leaves a little bit like more flowy. If you're working with a worsted weight yarn, don't bother cutting any, you don't have to cut it. Your leaves will be a little bit thicker, but just you would need fewer stitches all the way around because you're gonna have your leaves will be a little bit bigger. Okay, so at this point I'm going to cut one of the strands of my yarn off so that my leaves are just a little bit thinner and then they're a little bit easier to bounce around. Bear with me, I just have to roll up my yarn. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Hey Mike, jumping on to do, learn a little bit of crochet. <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming on and watching. So we're just working through the second row of the Blossom Scrunchie. So we've just joined, we've chained one, and now you're all looking to move on to the next row. And I've gone through the leaf pattern, which is yarn over, do a half double crochet, a nut yarn over, do another half double crochet. Then we're gonna do two double crochets, which is yarn over, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So next double crochet, yarn over, insert hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now we're gonna do a treble crochet, which is two yarn overs, insert your hook into the same stitch for the leaf, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two loops, pull through two loops, and then pull through two loops again. This will create your treble crochet. So you'll see already it's kind of starting to create a sort of a leaf, half of a leaf, okay? Don't worry, we're gonna do a lot of these during the crochet uh, along. So let, now that we've done the treble crochet, we're working the other side of the leaf now. So that's yarn over, insert hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and pull through two loops. So that's our first double crochet. Then yarn over, insert into the same hook, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two loops. Oops, sorry, I lost it. Let me catch up. And then pull through two loops again. Now we're gonna do our two half double crochets to complete the leaf. So yarn over, insert hook in the same stitch, yarn over again, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops. So that's our half double crochet. Again, if you need a refresher, don't forget to watch my video up here, I'll post it, which teaches you the half double crochet, double crochet, and treble crochet. And then we're going into our last stitch of the leaf, which is one more half double crochet. So insert into the same stitch, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops, okay? So to finish the leaf, like we have a whole leaf now, look at that. So if you're where I am, great. If not, we're gonna do, hi Indira. We're gonna do um, a lot more leaves. So I will narrate the next few leaves anyway. So we're all in this together. So now that we've completed the leaf, the last stitch into this leaf is a slip stitch, which will pull it all together. Okay, and that goes all into the same stitch. So now we have a leaf. There you go. So now, that all went into the same stitch. Now we need to move over to the next stitch. So how we're gonna do that without creating too much bulk is we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're going to slip stitch into the stitch beside it, 
which is right here. I don't know. If you watch the tutorial later, you'll be able to see it's literally the, the, the stitch right beside it. And we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch. And then, there you go. See how we slip stitched. Now we're gonna chain one to start our next leaf, okay? And our leaf, the pattern again, which is on the downloadable sheet, our special stitch for the leaf is two half double crochets. So into the same stitch, two half double crochets, two double crochets, one treble crochet, two double crochets, all in the same stitch, one half double crochet, and another half double crochet. Then we're gonna close off the leaf with a slip stitch. There we go. Who's on two leaves? I'll bet you Rose is on five already. <laughs> well, we're only, I'm only on two. There we go. Now the next leaf, I'll go again, a bit slower again, just in case. So we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch, just to move it over one. Good. There you go. And then we're gonna chain one. And we're gonna half double crochet twice, half double crochet is a yarn over, insert in the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Okay, let's do that half double crochet again. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three loops. Great, now we'll do double crochet. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, okay? One more double crochet, yarn over, insert in the same in stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, pull through two loops. Good, let's try that one more time. Hello friends. Double, we'll do a treble, yarn over twice, insert in the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. We only need to do one treble for the leaf. Now we're gonna do two more double crochet. Yarn over, two double crochets. So that's yarn over, insert. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Pull through two loops. One more double crochet. Yarn over, insert, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Pull through two loops. Okay, now we're gonna Yarn over for our last two half double crochets. Insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three loops. We'll do another one. Yarn over, insert into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three loops. Excellent, and now we're gonna close off the leaf. Okay, so that with no yarn over for slip stitch, insert into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then slip through the other loop. So that's a slip stitch, okay? Now we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch and continue with making our leaves. So yarn over, slip stitch into the stitch beside it. Then we're going to chain one, half double crochet. We'll do two of those in the same stitch two double crochet, one treble crochet, two double crochet, two half double crochet. Good, and you guessed it, slip stitch, just to close off the leaf, there we go. We're on our fourth leaf. Well, I'm on my fourth leaf already. How are you guys doing? Let me know if you have any questions so far or if I'm going too fast or way too slow. I can always answer questions as we go because 
Friends, we got a lot more leaves to put onto this, okay? So uh, now we slip stitch into our next stitch. And I am going to follow the leaf pattern. That's what we're doing now. We're going to just keep going with the two half double crochets, two double crochets, the one treble crochet, two doubles, one half, two half double crochets, and then the slip stitch. I lost count while I was talking. There we go. Half double crochet. Can we change color? Absolutely. Dana wants to know if you can change color. I was thinking that would be really pretty. The thing is like, I don't know if it would bother you that if you change color, your base won't match the leaves. But what you could do, I mean, you could do green all the way here around and then do different colors as the leaves. Or if you're patient enough to do this, you could change the color like you could crochet, change the color, and then if you're savvy enough to want to cut off and then match the color, you can. There's a ton of things you could do with this. I'm just doing it in one color for simplicity's sake. But by all means, Dan Dana, I know you have a lot of yarn colors to use. So Dana, if you, if you don't know, was the winner of my giveaway before last yarn giveaway. So we were able to send her like some really gorgeous yarn and some of it was bamboo, I think. And uh, I mean, I hope you're using it because this will be perfect for this hair scrunchie. So just make sure that if you ever um, are looking for yarn, I know it's kind of hard to get to the yarn shops these days because they may not be open. I know where we are, like we we don't have a lot of places that are open right now. And unless it's an essential service, you can't go to it. So you either have to buy your yarn on Amazon or you have to, um, I don't know, I don't think Michael's does curbside pickup. So right now it's kind of hard to get yarn. Luckily I'm kind of stockpiled for, for years. <laughs> So I have a lot of yarn that I could work with, but I mean, if you're looking for yarn, join the giveaway. You never know, you get like tons of yarn. I'm about to, uh, like another lady just won a new give, uh, recent giveaway for my 1000 subscriber mark. And um, she's going to get quite a bit of yarn as well. She's gonna get some acrylic yarn, wool, some bamboo. Um, I gave her a tote as, I mean, oh, Dana received a, a, a tote as well. And um, I think uh, this lady who most recently won, uh, who won, yeah, the 1000 subscriber giveaway, she, I gave her a scarf and the scarf matches all of the colors of yarn that uh, we, we have in the, in the giveaway. So, so that's, that's kind of fun. Don't forget to tune in for those, but I usually do maybe one or two a month. So if you're looking for yarn, then it's a fun way to get yarn and also get connected with the community because um, a lot of people will post the things that they plan on making on the yarn giveaways. And, um, and it's so cute to hear what people will do with it. So many people crochet for charities, for churches. There was a lady, I think the lady who won, she crochets for um, like a yarn, uh, no wait, she crochets for a, uh, like a dog shelter. So she makes things for dogs. That's so sweet. And then of course, a lot of people make things for people like friends and family and that sort of thing. I make things for friends, family, and of course my business. So it's fun. Oh, Dana, well, I would love it if, uh, if you could pick, if you would want to make post your products. Cl Clarissa is asking Michaels, Michaels does curbside pickup. That's fantastic. Cause then absolutely. Hey, print my pattern out and then go on and get your G hook, your yarn and some hair ties from Shoppers Drug Mart or Walmart because, oh, Walmart's another place that you could get yarn during like the, the shutdowns. So uh, yeah, there's, I guess there's still some really good places that you can still get yarn. Now I got to ask, how are you guys doing with your leaves? Are you somewhat through your hair tie at this point? I am on, I don't know how many of these I've done so far, but I'm on the last half double crochets of how many leaves do I still have to go? 
quite a number. So, hey, we're going to be crocheting along, and that is the theme of the day. So that's why we're here, right? I'm going to slip stitch, and I'm starting another leaf. Now I have to ask, how many people here are already avid crocheters? Oh, my needle handle. Um, I got my needle handle at, I think I got my first one, because honestly I, I have about like six of these. <laughs> but I got my first one at Michael's. I love the place, because my daughter and I love going there and just like completely losing ourselves at Michael's, but it works perfectly. I think it was, the first one I got was made by boy, but you can unhook it, okay? And I, this is actually in my self-care video if you ever get a chance to watch it, but I'll put a link here in post-production, but um, it's made for boy hooks. And I think they met the most standard hooks, but basically they comes the hook comes with the, I mean, the, the handle comes with a plunger and then you put the plunger over to the flat part and then it'll stop it from sliding through. Then you can basically transform any hook into an ergonomic handle so you don't have to um, shut your hand. Now, once Michael's, at one point they sold out and I thought, oh my gosh, maybe they're discontinuing it. But they didn't discontinue it, but I ended up being able to find it in Amazon. So if you are able to, um, if you want, if you find the self-care video on my YouTube channel, then um, there's a link on Amazon for the ergonomic handle too, if you wanna take a look at it. But it's like super handy. I've been using this ergonomic handle for years. It saved my hand. Cause I do get inflammation around my, um, I get tendonitis in these two fingers in my palm on like on a regular basis. I just recently had that happen to me after all of this quarantine stuff happened. I think it could be related to stress too, you know, but anyhow, it's a good thing to have. There's a lot of ergonomic good choices for crochet hooks. So how are most of you doing here? Oh, I hope you will check it out. Now, one thing I do miss is that at the time of all of the shutdowns, I was doing in-person classes. And um, fortunately, I was able to get a few people off to the start and they were able to get the foundation stitches to be able to create basically anything. But as I mentioned before, if you, if you haven't, um, if you don't already know how to crochet, there's a couple of videos I have where you can um, you can learn how to crochet at least the foundation stitches, like half double crochet, double crochet, and treble crochet in my videos. <clears throat> now, do many of you follow other uh, crochet sites? If you do, let me know who they are. Or if you have like a YouTube site or a Instagram site and would like a shout out, take a picture of this video and then give me a uh, post it on your Insta story and tag me. And then I will be sure to do a shout out for you um, the next time I post my next video. Maybe post a project that you've worked on. And then I'll give you a shout out. Just take a picture of um, your project or this feed or do screenshot this video. And don't forget to tag me. You can tag Canada Bliss or you can tag Karen B. Miguel, whichever you like. Hello, Dusty Cat. Good to see you. Let me know, are you crocheting along or are you just observing for the pattern? For those of you just joining us, I just want to remind you that you can download the pattern in a printable format. I put a link to the downloadable printable like format on the YouTube comments. Or you could find it in the original post where I did the do where I show the tutorial of this in my last post. 
But, you know, I thought it would be fun to kind of all get together and just crochet together. Like, you know, it was funny. <laughs> it was funny before I did this live feed, because honestly, I don't do live feeds, but I've done one before for a giveaway. And then I thought, oh, you know what would be fun? Like, I love crocheting with people. So why not like do a crochet along? And, um, and then before I kind of, once I got everything started and I started thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to do a crochet along today. I got kind of nervous and I thought, oh my gosh, like what if things don't go well, but honestly, what's the worst that can happen? Right. Same thing with like crochet. You just unravel it. You fix it. That's a great, that's a beauty about crochet. If you don't like it, you just undo it. And then you just start over and maybe make something new or you just keep going at the one, the thing that you like. So I just jumped on in and I thought, well, you know, who doesn't enjoy crocheting? I mean, when you're learning, it gets tough, but once you get going, it's just, it's just so relaxing. Look at that. Look how something beautiful comes from absolutely nothing when you just sit here and crochet. <laughs> I'm doing my last two double crochets into this stitch. Another option too is to do a Zoom feed. I know a lot of people are doing these Zoom feeds. I was actually on a Zoom feed last night for my nephew's birthday. It was fun. That's what I thought. Maybe the next one I do, I'll, I'll kind of make it a Zoom feed. But I mean, I find too with Zoom, how many people actually show their face because I know we're all home. And when is the last time we like washed our hair, you know? <laughs> I did, I washed my hair. It's it's back because I've, I've got my hair in one of these scrunchies. But honestly, the first time I had to shoot a video after this quarantine thing, I almost forgot how to put my makeup on. <laughs> It'd been so long since I'd had to put makeup on for work that I was like, oh my gosh, I think I skipped a few steps. <laughs> now, do, do any of you have any questions about the pattern so far? Looks like everyone's doing pretty okay. I'm almost halfway, or I'm a little bit past halfway, maybe. One thing I have to remind you guys of is if you are crocheting and you decide to continue, like if you crochet for more than like half an hour or so, don't forget to stop and stretch to make sure that you don't injure yourself. Cause it's super easy to get like, um, like motion injuries or carpal tunnel, just because you make things so tense in your wrists and your hands that it just, it's not good for you. And then the repetitive movements damage your, your, the small hands and your muscles. So don't forget to stretch. Maybe when I get close to the, to the end, we haven't been crocheting for too, too long just yet, but when I get closer to the end, I'll show you some of the stretches, but you can also see some of the stretches that I would recommend in the self-care video that I'd mentioned earlier. Oh, thank you, Alexandra. How are you, my friend? Now, Alexandra, we just showed some of her yarn on my last video. She sent a lovely care package to me, her cotton yarn is perfect for these scrunchies. There is like a mercerized yarn that she sells and it is absolutely, the drape in it is so pretty. If you were to make a scrunchie, it would look really, really, it, the, um, the drape in it is so nice that the leaves would really look kind of organic. So you should give that a try. Try and find a nice leaf with a uh, nice yarn with a good drape to it. And yes, you can get that from Bufar Yarns. And this is not a sponsored post. I just think that the mercerized yarn is absolutely lovely. Now I'll just quickly review for those of you who might be joining us um, just halfway. When I get to the next leaf, I'm gonna go through the stitch pattern for the leaf, okay? 
I'm just going to finish up this leaf. Oops. There we go. Bear with me. I don't have a cold. I just have allergies, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm starting in the next leaf. So I'm slip stitching into the stitch, chain one. I'm going to two, do two half double crochets, two double crochets. to one treble crochet, two double crochets. Creative and Aviv, hello my friend. So two double crochets, two half double crochets, and then a slip stitch, which makes a full leaf. I'm gonna go into the next stitch by slip stitching and then chaining one. Now you wonder why I chain one. If you're new to crochet, when you begin a row or you begin something, you kind of have to bring the stitch up to the right level that the stitch height is. So a chain one is about, is enough to bring it to, sometimes you will chain two to bring it up. Uh, oh, Viv, Viv, I'll call you Viv, my dear. Okay, um, to bring a your stitch up to a half double crochet, some people do two. Um, chains, but I'm just doing one because I want it to be really close to the base. So again, to start a leaf, we're going to do two half double crochets, two double crochets all in the same stitch, one treble crochet, two double crochets, two half double crochets, and one slip stitch into the same stitch, which makes the leaf. I hope yours is coming along. I really hope you'll tag me on Instagram with your project. I really wanna see how it's turning out for you guys. So chain one, we're gonna do our next leaf, two half double crochet, two double crochet, One treble crochet, two double crochet, two half double crochet, and a slip stitch. Great. And we'll go into our next stitch. With a slip stitch, chain one, continue on. So do you guys find that you've had much time to do a lot of crocheting with the with the low like you know social distancing and quarantining that's happening or are you kind of working on other things? I'll be honest, I've had time to do a little bit of both, but um I've also had time to like get like headway on some online courses that I've also been doing that are unrelated, but I always like taking courses. So it's nice to be able to catch up in addition to some regular work. Now I know for some of you fast crocheters, you might be close to the end. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are already close to the end of this blossom scrunchie. And if you are, which, or if you're not even, what do you think so far? Is it clear enough? Do you, do you, what do you think of the pattern? Like, just give me a quick comment or so, just so I can get some feedback on what you think. Either on the Facebook or, or uh, YouTube channel. Oh, awesome. Thumbs up. Thumbs up's good. I'll take that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, Laura Lynn. How are you, my dear? Oh my gosh, Laura Lynn's daughter is so cute. She is posting these adorable cooking videos on her Facebook. This kid is going to be a star, I tell you. Her whole family is like, they're stars. Okay. 
Now, if you um, are just, if you're watching and it's more like an ASMR thing, wait, I have a question. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, like if this, if crocheting, sometimes you just listen to as a podcast, or if it's like an ASMR thing and you just listen to it in the background, then that is totally cool with me. I listen to tons and tons of like podcasts and videos in the background as well. I also love to crochet listening to music and uh, musical theater. And my daughter and I will sometimes listen to entire musicals while I'm working on projects. But wouldn't it be fun to do that? Like have a theme for a crochet along and you just like sing the entire soundtrack to like Hamilton. Did you know I was gonna say Hamilton? <laughs> Or like the entire, I used to know how to sing the entire soundtrack for Miss Saigon with my friends and we'd all like sing parts and we, <laughs> Hamilton, that's right. <laughs> but um, we'd all sing parts. So when parts would come up, we'd all take like a character and we'd sing. This is like a long driving sort of thing. But if musical theater is not your thing, then... I mean, any kind of music is fun to crochet too. Or listening to audiobooks. Again, if you have any questions about this pattern, feel free to let me know. This is what our crochet along is for. We can just kind of like hang out and make what we love. I'm getting down to the last few stitches. I don't know how you guys are doing, but I hope, I hope it's turning out pretty okay and you're finding the stitches that you need. I find one of the more tricky parts of this um, pattern, and I hope it hasn't become a challenge for any of you, is um, slip stitching into the stitch over because the once you finish the leaf, the next stitch is so close to the stitch you're in because you've crocheted so much into that one stitch that you could accidentally skip the stitch and go into the next one. Now, actually, that's not the most terrible thing to do because if you're working with thicker yarn, then you may actually want to skip the stitch because um, it's too thick and there's like there's too many uh leaves like if you find that this is too um like dense in terms of how many leaves are on here then you can slip a stitch skip a stitch however i'd recommend that you slip stitch into this in try and slip stitch into um before you skip a stitch because if you skip a stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch instead you might make this too tight because you're kind of like you're you're binding together two stitches if you slip stitch across it so that you spread out the leaves a little bit more then you'll find that it doesn't you'll get a less dense scrunchie which is totally fine because um sometimes too many leaves will just make it too kind of hard to manipulate but if you want fewer leaves then slip stitch ac uh, across two of the stitches or when you're doing the base row just make fewer leaves like um instead of crocheting 30 uh, 45 which is what I did for the standard size maybe just crochet like 30 or 35 that way your your scrunchie doesn't end up too too full and then um it then the thing about making a scrunchie that's too too full is the leaves might become unrecognizable and then it's just too too tight in terms of like how many leaves are on there so or if you're using a higher gauge yarn, then you probably want to, um, you know, do less leaves because the, the leaves in itself will be taking up more space along the scrunchie. So it's up to you, really. I think I skipped some. That's okay. <laughs> no one's going to see. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's totally okay. You end up kind of developing your own personal preference in, in terms of how many you want. Like I do this in two ways. I sometimes do 45 all the way around and then I crochet like I'm doing right now into every single one of the stitches. But I've also done it where um, in between I will slip stitch twice just so I can get half the number of leaves 
Or another thing you could do is like some of the, sometimes you slip stitch twice, sometimes you slip stitch once, and then like a natural looking kind of like blossom, it looks very like organic and very kind of random. So it's okay to like slip stitch once or slip stitch twice or even just skip one if you want to spread out or group your, your blossom leaves. No sweat. So no need for the little sweaty emoji. <laughs> I see you have a little, little perspiring emoji there. It's really, it's no sweat at all. <laughs> I mentioned in my tutorial video that when you're making the leaves and it gets down to the last few in the hair scrunchie, you gotta be sure that you don't um, like start snagging the other leaves because then um, like it gets tricky to navigate around here once it's once you have so many leaves on your um, hair scrunchie. I think I'm down to the last four or five. So just be cautious. It takes a little bit of uh, maneuvering to hold down the other leaves to make sure that you don't snag them and end up with like snagged yarn. But even if you do, I mean, it's always okay to, like if you accidentally snag, say this, stitch over here on this one. You can always kind of just give it a pull or you could use a you could use a darning needle to pull out like the other side of the stitch so that you even it out again. So just have your darning needle ne nearby so you can like correct any sort of snagging or whatever or you could pull it back into the 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 piece using a darning needle or even your hook. It all works. That's a beauty boat yarn. You could just you just keep going or you can undo it if you don't like it. If you watched one of my last videos about um, I think it was on the giveaway, the 1000 subscriber giveaway, I I talk about how I work with yarn because I'm not great at some of the other types of crafts. Like I'm not a fantastic cook, but I'm like, I'm not the greatest sewer either. And then I had a little sewing accident. I used to love sewing when I was a kid, but then I had an incident where when I was sewing at, I, was, I think it was probably like in grade seven and I was sewing this bag at like two o'clock in the morning and I accidentally got my finger yeah, it went it went into the sewing machine and the needle actually stuck out of my finger. So I had to unscrew it from the back of the machine and then um, and then slide it out and remove it from my finger. And then uh, <laughs> I had to tell my mom the next day and then I had to get a tetanus shot. But it was a pretty gruesome ordeal and I hadn't sewn for years. But as a like an adult, I'd taken up, I sew my um I sew my kids' costumes, um, and occasionally, like I, I occasionally, I'll, I'll sew. And then I attempted to create these, you know, the social distancing masks. So you know, maybe I could just wear them to the grocery store or give them away to friends and family. And then I had another accident, so <laughs> I cut my finger with a rotary knife trying to cut the fabric. That was that was fun. <laughs> it was gruesome just the thought of it like you know for a fraction of a second when you're thinking oh my gosh yikes that hurt and then when I looked at it and for two seconds it wasn't bleeding I'm like that's deep and then it just started bleeding it was it was pretty terrible anyway I hope I totally didn't gross everybody out by telling you that story <laughs> but anyway so I stick with yarn it's safe. I can't like completely cut myself doing it. Oh my goodness. How are you guys doing? Am I inspiring you to like create amazing, amazing things through crochet? Or are you at least able to get this crochet scrunchie done? I really hope you'll give it a try. This is such a cute scrunchie. 
for those of you who just like, you know, watching for like ASMR purposes or you find it relaxing to see something created, then you can still have this scrunchie for yourself or give it as gift because on my Canada Bliss website, canada-bliss.com, I know a lot of you are already like frequent customers, but um, I have the finished product on my uh on my site it just went up live yesterday so if you want to purchase like the finished scrunchie it is the pom-pom scrunchie then you can go ahead and purchase it it's live it's up or you could like i also have gift cards up for mother's day in case you guys want to give a gift to like your your favorite gal whether she's a mom or just like a hard-working lady so go feel free to go ahead and uh Check that out as well. It's Canada-Bliss.com. <clears throat> I think I am just about in my last stitch. And it's almost like, can you believe I did this in like one hour flat? We did it, guys. <laughs> can you believe it? I did not time it like that. I thought how I didn't know whether I'd be on here for half an hour or an hour, but at least I got a chance to go through this with you. Aw, thank you, Laura. She says, I'm inspiring or the story's inspiring or something's inspiring, but thank you. But uh, okay, on your last stitch, here it is. You're going to release your hook and go in through the back of your project at the bottom of your, of the, of the project in the last in the first stitch at the bottom of the first stitch and take that loop and loop it tighten it and loop it to the back of your work cuz we just want to hide that okay then you will take your yarn yarn over and pull it through the loop and tighten up that loop okay you're going to tighten it up Thank you, Rosa. I bet you were done 10 minutes ago, maybe half an hour ago. <laughs> and then we're gonna cut and fasten off. And my friends, welcome to the newest addition to our scrunchie family, <laughs> the Blossom Scrunchie with Pom Pom. Okay, now we've got it. It's not done until you weave in those ends, okay? So I know we have a few minutes left before we hit the one hour mark. So I am just gonna weave those ends in, okay? And those of you who don't know how to weave in ends, yeah, hey, here's the demonstration. So to get it into the darning needle, you'll want to fold the yarn and you could fold the yarn by holding both ends and stretching the yarn and then pinching it. Sorry, let's try, try that again. You pinch it like that and then unslide it. I'll do it for the um, YouTube and Facebook people. Then you put your the hole of the darning needle over the yarn and because yarn's usually too thick for the hole. So you slide it through and you, you, got, that, you got your yarn through the hole, which is probably narrower than the yarn. So that's how you do it. Let's do it one more time. So fold your yarn, oops, one more time. Fold your yarn over the needle, pinch it and take your needle out. Then hold the hole over where the yarn is and slide it through. See that? Okay. And now it's on. Great. Then we're going to weave in the ends and we're going to choose a part of the, of the project where there's a lot of, like it's pretty dense. Well, thank you. I hope I don't have an annoying voice because it would be hard for people to listen to for over a long period of time. Sometimes when I'm editing my videos, I get sick of my voice. <laughs> so thank you. If, my voice is calming. So, okay. Then we slide the, the, uh, the darning needle through again. What we're trying to do is just go back and forth. So if you ever decide that you're gonna wash this or if you get a lot of use out of it, that the stitch or the end won't come loose. 
There we go. And then we're going to cut the extra off. And you're going to repeat this with all of your loose ends. Friends, do you have any questions about the pattern? If you do, feel free to post them in the comments below. And don't forget to pick up your downloadable pattern. If you don't know how to crochet already, the stitches that you need to use for this pattern have already been taught in my other two instructional videos that I'll put a link to and the post-production part of this when I do the, when I post this online. And um, all you need to know is how to hold your yarn, your hook, slip stitch, chain, single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, and treble crochet. Actually, you don't even need to know single crochet, just how to slip stitch. So I hope you'll join in on future patterns and posts and give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to join my Bliss by Hand online. If you're not um, already a member of Bliss by Hand, then please head over to my Facebook page and join. And also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube video. And uh, I think that's about it. I hope we get another chance to crochet together, everyone. If you have any questions or requests, then just let me know. And I will see you all next time. Thank you for crocheting with me today. And uh, stay healthy and happy, friends. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.